Heidi, Heidi, everybody, this is Gene Bradley Fisk, you know, Fisco on the Bizzo, and you've got 3BO Retro. Hi there, you there, it's me here, Gene Bradley Fisk, and you're with 3BO Retro. is the voice of Gene Bradley Fisk and Mike Brady sitting opposite me, a fellow music man. Uh, a quick critique, if I can, of that particular track in this album. Uh, the track's beautiful, I mean, obviously, but uh, the track's tr the album's called Up North, Down South, Out West, and uh, Gene Bradley Fisk is the composer of most of the songs on it. But it's a fabulous album. It's such a gentle album. I listened to it last night and a bit more of it today, and uh, it's got a real depth to it. It's got uh, it's very sincere. It's songs sung by an absolute legend in country music in Australia, but there's something really intrinsically honest and unpretentious about this album. I really loved it. I think it's uh, superb. Well, Gene Bradley Fisk joins us. How's that for a review, Gene? Yeah, that was a beaut intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll send the, the accounts in the, I'll send the account in the mail to you, Gene. But, uh, look, it's lovely. Congratulations. Um, I've, I've really loved it, and uh, I think that you know some of the tracks on it, like Back in Bendigo, which uh, the one we just heard, which is Boomer's Lullaby, such a gentle thing. I love the thing about the loggers uh, somewhere east of Mount Sabine. 
<clears throat> evening in Paris, which is seen with the beautiful doors of Donna, who yeah. I've known for a thousand years. And uh, I'm going to let you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm answering all the questions I was going to ask, but um, <laughs> the, the, hardly a prolific uh, album release. This is the second album in God knows how many years, isn't it, Jane? Yes, 1981 was a vinyl album I put out called Blood of a Rambler. And one of, the, one of the songs on over the title track of that, Blood of a Rambler, was written by a bloke called George Mooney. He's an American fellow, and mm. I've written to him over the years, and he's sort of retired now, but he sent me a, an album a few years ago with a track on it, which I put on this, uh, this album um, called Songwriter's Prayer. Mm. But, um, yeah, I know I haven't been a prolific album maker, but I did a lot of singles, uh, Mike, over the years. Uh, and EPs, I know, yeah, I know you have. And uh, yeah. and I've, I've seen your name bob up so many times in, you know, in uh, the country circuit. And uh, I'm just surprised with the quality of this beautiful album produced by uh, a mate of mine, and I know a mate of yours, and Donna, your daughter's uh, Michael Cristiano. And what a beautiful musician. And I just think it really suits the style. It's such a gentle album, isn't it? It? Yes, well, I started uh, recording with, with Michael when he and Donna were doing the, the, the Fisk and Christian thing, and he had a studio over in Altona, and still does. Mm. And uh, so I kept doing these singles, and then we did the EPs, and then when it came, you know, I'm a bit of a procrastinator, Mike. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and also I was running around uh, as a, doing a solo act, and eventually I, I got... Well, it was Donna. She kept at me and kept at me, and eventually, when we got to do the album, we decided that we'd put the tracks on there that we did the five other tracks over the years, plus the seven new songs. So it's more or less a, a, what we call a body of work, and Michael Christian's work, of course, with his uh, great production and, uh, and engineering skills and, and the musicianship, of course. So how, how long has this CD been in the making, then? Quite some well, time. Well, yeah, that's just... <laughs> We started recording last year, um, fairly late as I recall, like last year. We did it all over a period of, of weeks, and I think that Mike uh, remastered the, the other tracks so everything sort of fitted, and then uh, he put it down on the album. It was his choice on the actual run of the album. But uh, I was quite pleased with it, naturally. I mean, I'd be nowhere with that. Michael Cristiano and, uh, and and Donna, they're the ones that Donna in particular, who is sort of my unofficial manager, uh, and she does all the promotions and has done so for months now. She's been promoting it, and she organised a, 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 a an album, a concert where we launched it up in Malmesbury back in um, when was it October, and um, which was a big success. Everybody was there and. I had a good time. I don't remember a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been a good well, time. Well, it's a great looking CD too. It's got the big fold out p p feel to it. It's a, it's a, it's a great photograph. We looked at it last night, Simon and I. Just love the look of it. But look, uh, while we're talking about uh, Donna Fisk, your your daughter, who I've worked with many times over the years, not just in country music, but uh, she's yeah. such a trooper. She's done everything. We're going to play um, track eight off the CD, if that's if that's okay, Jean. Another song, but I mean, I love all the songs on this. I thought it was such an honest album, but I uh, particularly like this with you and uh, Don. It's one of the two duets you do. It's called Midwinter Blues in the oh. middle. Gene, I have to ask, now, I am only 40 myself. Uh, I've he, known... he looks a lot older. <laughs> <laughs> I know how old you are, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gene, I've, I've known of Donna Fisk for quite some time, which means I, I'm guessing you've been around slightly longer, being her father. How long exactly have you been in the country music uh, scene industry? Well, I, I was in rock and roll bands. You, you don't remember me, I suppose, Michael. Well, I, I've got a feeling that I do, Gene, but, but I mean, I was reading on the bio that it said, you know, you've been 50 years in the country scene, but I figured, well, I didn't start before you. I reckon you started either about the same time or even before me. Is that right? Uh, well, look, it's 50-odd it's years in, in music, and, I'll, well, you know, you know, you were in a, a band called MPD Limited. Mm -hmm. I was in a band called The Huntsman. And oh, uh, I remember The Huntsman really well. Yes, I know. You worked with us a number of times, MPD. I think I stole one of your guitar leads. <laughs> I don't know about that. But, but when uh, the first words I ever said to you, you, you were sitting up on stage, and we didn't know who MPD were, and we were working at the Waterside Workers Hall down on, 
on the eastern beach. I remember it. Yeah, and I'd set my amp up, my uh, Burns amp, my new Burns amp, see, and, <laughs> and this uh, young fella comes up with a, an old Fender amplifier, and he jumps it on and bangs up against my amplifier, and I said, hey, son, watch the amplifier. And, and, and this kid says, well, he was about 17 or 18, said, <laughs> Oh, sorry, sir, I didn't really mean to do that. And I thought, my gosh, this a kid with manners. <laughs> so the MPD came on the stage, and no one had ever heard of him, really. And all the musicians of Geelong were there to see what they were about. And uh, they all stand down the back of the hall. By halfway through the uh, uh, MPD set, all the musicians of Geelong were up there in the front of the stage watching you guys doing what you're doing. And the reason for that was we hadn't seen anything like it before. Uh, we were into shadows and uh, stuff, and we did a bit of Beatles. But we, you guys introduced something in presentation on stage, which we hadn't seen, and so that was everyone was talking about it, and we used to try and take his off a bit too. So, <laughs> so you were pretty good. Oh, that's great, Jim. I certainly remember the Huntsman, but I don't remember being that polite. <laughs> oh, yes, you were. Well, we we we, we worked uh, with you. Um, uh, at, at the uh, Temperance Hall one night that was packed out and we also worked one New Year's Eve with you at um, at Port Arlington and uh, if you remember our manager was the late Alec Martin yes I do wow right. well that's amazing G like, that's really brought back so many memories to me I remember that New Year's Eve in Port Arlington as well yeah wow are you still down that way aren't you I live down near uh, back of Anglesey near Moria Ah, oh, terrific. Well, I'm down that way too, so we should catch up and have a coffee and reminisce, I think. You never know. Um, look, I'm going to give out, because uh, I'm sure a few listeners will be interested in this beautiful CD. Um, you don't mind if I give the c contacts out for you? Um, no, that's all right. It's, uh, if, you, if you've got, got a pen, it's, if you look up the email, which is Gene Fisk, if you want this CD, which is uh, Gene, F-I-S-K, at bigpond.com. And uh, what about the number, Gene? My phone number. Yep. Yeah, you can get me on five two six six one three four six, or they can um, write to me, uh, Gene Fisk, care of Post Office Box seven four zero Belmont three two one six. Um, I'd love to catch up with you. I've got the number. I'm going to give, be giving you a buzz too because I think we're overdue for a cup of coffee. Um, okay. Fabulous album. Congratulations. Um, we've loved it. Um, I, I grabbed it before Simon really got a chance to listen to it properly. But I just love it. It's a gentle and it's really honest. That's what I like about it. Thanks, mate. All right, and thanks to Simon too who uh, was liaising with Donna over this uh, interview. Oh, no, our, our pleasure. It's great to have you on and it's a, it's a fabulous album. So why wouldn't we? Thank you very much. I'm, I'm pleased to say I am. As Donna said, when you go on, Dad, don't swear and no politics. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Gene. Good Thanks. On you. Thank you very yeah. much, fellas. Gene, I appreciate it very much. Gene, I, 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 we are short of time, and I know we should be going to a break right this minute, but I have to ask, a quick Google search found a photo of yourself with Smokey Dawson. I love Smokey Dawson. He was just the loveliest guy. Tell us about meeting him in 60 seconds. Well, last time, I'm, no, not the last time, but... I interviewed him back when he was my age, and you, you realise I still haven't told you how old I am. Yeah. But uh, he was elderly then, and I, I said to him at the end of the interview, uh, I was on 3 Z then, with country music, and uh, I said, Smokey, what about the future? And he said, Gene, I'll be living in it. And he was. He lived in 90-odd. Yeah. I met him not long before he died, and he was a wonderful, wonderful man. Well, he was. Yeah, thanks, Gene. Gene Bradley Fisk. The album's called Up North, Down South, Out West, and it's a beauty. Hi, folks. I'm Gene Bradley Fisk, and you've got 3BO Retro. I do what I want. 